Mika Fabs here, and I am standing right now with Colbat, coach of Team SMG. Colbat, can you let us know Team SMG has a bit of a unique coaching style? How do you share that role with Kohaiwi? Um, wow. I think with Kohaiwi, she does put in a lot of effort. So we sort of lean more towards like uh, trying to figure out stuff on the way and then really leaning more to like, all the stuff that analysts do. Yeah, there are a lot of like really great analysts out there and then I, like I'm, I, I'm not going to drop names, you know, it's not going to be fair, but yeah, we, we like to lean more towards a very aggressive kind of style to analytical kind of style. So, and then we also take some consideration of our players into mind. That's why sometimes our com, there are some maps that our comms will be weird, but yeah, I think yeah, we have a good dynamic. Well, uh, it seems to be working, so best of luck to you guys. Seems to be working in the 13 and 8 for SMG to close out G2 Gozen's map pick, Bind. We already said it, we were like, wow, this is another ace of their sleeve that they're throwing our way. But it turns out SMG is the one taking the lead on this one. Hear me out, this is dangerous, you know, because okay. we have been in the position before where a team has stolen our hearts. And I think that SMG had a perfect start yesterday and they're just doing it again and again. And they're doing it just by amazing individual plays time after time. It literally, I love the fact that they're so honest. They do not care that they're playing against G2. They're just performing so well individually in every single round. I was so thrilled by, by them um, uh, actually in every single instance finding, okay, we can do this one better for the next round. That's exactly what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And that is what we expected from them, right? From SMG, like the those like peaks and like out of, no, out of nothing, just randomly going W and just going for the kills, like out of nothing. To me, um, SMG really relied on highlights and that could be a bad thing and that could be a good thing because when you're on a good day, Honestly, it's perfect because yeah. you just do those highlights and, and things work out for you. But there are going to be days that it's not going to be like that. And I wanted to take a look at this head to head because I think that we've talked a lot about Mimi. I was so surprised by the performance from Alexi because, yes, we did have a lot. I think that everybody in SMG had their round with their multi kills, but she was keeping everybody lumpy, lumpy, lumpy. so pumped up. Her utility usage on Skype was beautiful in so many rounds. And actually, in that second half, once they figured out that G2 was just playing up to the retake and that they just needed to execute as soon as possible and just think about the rest in the mid round and how they were going to face it, it looked so clean and crisp from SMG. I was looking at Alexi all the time because I feel like she was one of the players keeping keeping everyone the energy, in the zone right? and also G2 a little bit uncomfortable. So yeah. Yeah, that's what you need. The perfect mix coming through yes. from them. For Alexi just really showing up this time around. Then I think it also brings a lot of question in terms of moving forward, what we can be expecting from them because yesterday we said it, this is an SMG that was just pressing W. They weren't really stopped in their tracks, but it felt like even G2 was not able to stop them in their tracks. Honestly, I think they were just not prepared. Like there were a few plays that could be countered with skills and resources that I think that G2 did not really got. Like when you when you look at the 3K and 4K of uh, SMG mm -hmm. with Alexis and uh, I think um, Kohaibi, Kohaibi, mm -hmm. yes, uh, they were not flashed, and that was an execution. So. There's something the, wrong, right? But they were also like playing from from inside the smoke. Like these are the kind of plays that you have seen before, that you have also seen in ranked. It's not something completely yeah. uh, new and unexpected. There was something that, uh, for example, Roxy was leading the charts in the numbers. But for example, on the on the attack, she wasn't having that impact. Like everything was everywhere. And we were talking about it here, and that's why we were watching it, being like, "Wow, Roxy, we know what you're capable of, and you're being shut down. Like you literally have to back and retrieve your utility, or feel like you do not have the impact." Not in the early round, not in the mid round. You're just there to try and get the kills. Yeah, it felt like at times here and there, G2 was able to bring it back. Round 15 was where they kind of started to get three rounds back to back. I think that's the most we've seen from them really this time around. But what exactly did SMG change in their approach to be able to say to G2, no, not today? Uh, to me, it was on their attack side. They just um, snowballed, honestly. The, uh, the after plans were being just um, peeking and everyone pushing and everyone together. 
That is a great point. Like everyone, even though they were passing that view, they were all together all times. Yep. Like four people peeking. It's impossible to kill everyone. Like, I think they, they understood the assignment. Yeah. As I said, like G2 is playing retakes. Okay, they, they, they want us to plan. We'll just go and plan. We're playing the brainstorm. We're playing the Viper textbook in my books, at least. Absolutely. Um, uh, the perfect executes, perfect smokes. Just put in a, a, you know, one step further. As you said, they're, they're going to go for the retake. We will be ready for that. We will peak off timing. We will be prepared. And at some point, like, they had a plan, right? G2 had a plan, and they just stopped following it. Because uh, at some point, they, when they were doing, like, A executions, Brim was dying in mid. Like, uh, Sarah was dying mid, doing nothing, like, solo. And I think that is kind of runs from the plan, you know? Mm. A bit of an oopsie poopsie happening there, but the second map that we're going to be heading into is going to be split. Yes. And this one, however, being SMG's pick, to me, Kukuka shouts out, they're comfortable, they're confident, they want to get it going. So when we're looking at what just happened on Bind, yes. what are we expecting? Uh, the unexpected, because this is a <laughs> yeah, map literally. that they have played. No, 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 <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. This is a map that SMG has played a lot. I think that they have maybe played it eight times. In, with seven different compositions. We've seen some Reyna, you know, we've seen different different, different duelists, different smokers. So if G2 wants to have that standard of we're going to be the unpredictables of the tournament, honestly, SMG wants that title. Yeah. The Game Changer Championship as well, but that one is oh, one that they will, yeah. Yeah, 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 they will okay. definitely get. A so. little prediction thrown in there in the mix, just like spicing it up a little. But you're looking at split, and we're looking at a couple of mistakes, essentially, that we've seen from G2. One thing that we you highlighted specifically was the flank, something that they weren't really able able to stop from the side of SMG. You're talking potentially deviating from the plan. When you're heading onto a map like Split, are you worried that these could be mistakes that are repeated or uh, considering it's G2, they can just fix that? Honestly, Split is a map that you you have to play like, flank is not, it's not a thing. Or right? oh, you like, tell that to Petra. <laughs> <laughs> like you or can Roxy. you could have flanks, but it's just like specific um, rounds and it become uh, predictable at some point yes. and like it's something that you can work against and in your favor as well but um it's not that strong as it is in bind yeah, I think that but what you're trying to say is that we're so used to, for example, having that cipher just locking one side of the map that it's very easy to read into it. And when the timing of uh, of um, of the lurk is going to be starting, that is actually yeah. pretty easy to read into, especially if you have the time and the opportunity to look at what your opponent does. But again. This is a map that we still have to see from G2 ever since that role swap. So maybe there are more things changing in that sense. Yeah, the changes came on coming from G2 and it feels like it's the opposite of SMG because they're one thing that they're staying consistent with Lysa is that they're just pressing W and going straight onto site. And that feels Man, like they also had some good standards. I they did also have some good standards, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know when you're, all, when you're seeing them shooting up everything, you're like, oh, they got that too. Is, yeah. is that but it's that kind of rounds that you actually <laughs> remember at the, yeah. at the end they're, of the day. They're very memorable. We also have an interview ready with Carcass. So let's head over to Mika and see what Carcass had to say. Mika Fabs here, and I'm standing right now with Carcass from G2. We saw that that was a difficult map for G2. How, wh what was SMG doing that was so difficult to deal with, and how do you plan on fixing that in map two? I mean, uh, they're playing really aggressive, and in my eyes, we really did too much, like we gave them too much respect, and we need to fight for those areas, and we cannot just sit and wait and try not to lose. Uh, and yeah, like we had a really serious talk in the, in the green room, and uh, yeah, we just need to change mentality, like from them get, allowing them to play however they want and actually us dictating the pace and how we want to play the game. Thanks very much, Karkas. Let's see if G2 can make a comeback. A stern talking to in the green room. We gave them too much respect. Ooh, Ooh. these are some. I'm looking forward to that split. I feel like the hype here is going. Great. I love it because Carcass has been in charge of this team for a very, very long time, and we know that you know he has been behind some of these changes, and they're a very well working group. So the fact that he is also honest about it, be like, yeah, we needed a serious talk, and that's exactly what we did. We gave them too much respect. They knew that SNG was coming in with this plan. How did they? How did uh, uh, they allow it uh, to happen? And what it has to change so much on split? Is this going to be even, even faster pace? Like how? Ooh. What is going to happen on, on split? Are we going to turn into an A? I was pressing oh. W all the time. <laughs> no shade. No shade. No, no shade. Nothing. No shade. Whatever. But we're looking as well at G two, and I think highlighting what we've seen from that interview, just the fact that they're aware of what they need to change. G two can adapt. Do you think? Really, uh, I think uh, in this map, it's uh, easier to stop the the pushes. 
on CT mainly. So um, I think G2 could shine and play that slow game that they like to play and really just shine. It's their moment. Okay, it's their okay. moment. It's Loving not their moment, but it's Loving their moment. That. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I need to see something, uh, uh, you know, something more. I, I want them to start the map and be very, very comfortable. Very, not only leading the, the upper hand, but I feel like SMG is still in the honeymoon period that they were uh, yesterday. We were talking about maybe needing them needing uh, to be on that, uh, on that uh, harder position. Mm -hmm. Still hasn't happened. Yeah, and we're also going to be heading into the Prime Gaming Agency, like just to see what is actually going to be thrown in the mix. I mean, we've... Are you expecting Reyna? I would love Arena, to be honest. Um, I'm expecting mm -hmm. everything. Girl. Yeah, so, you know, At expect the, the unexpected. Dead luck. <laughs> yeah, really. come, just come. ISO? I haven't <laughs> seen him yet. Hear me out. Uh, talking to crew, they were like, you know what? Maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> yeah, Didn't maybe. get it though. It's definitely, definitely there. I, d I don't expect it, honestly. It yeah. takes courage, and SMG has a lot of it. Honestly? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know yeah. what? You yeah. actually cannot predict what's you going on. You know what? Winnable. <laughs> winnable. winnable. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, if four duelists is winnable, then uh, I saw should be winnable too. I think that just for so let's head into Prime Gaming Ages like to further solidify whether or not we're gonna get another curveball. I literally have every single composition that um, yeah. that SMG has played this year in front of me just to see, just so I can tell you they have or they haven't. You know, the lady, lately they've been going for a more tamed version of it. Oh my god, okay. it's going to be the tamed tame. version yeah. of it. And Petra, of course, is going to be on that race, Mimi on that sky. And double controller for the side of G2 goes in EMEA. We're big, big fans of double initiator or double info. Um, and uh, you know what? I'm loving it. I think that they, they could literally uh, use some change in this direction. Uh, there are two default comps in this map. There is one with Cypher and Omen that is a more aggressive comp. Yes. And one with Ashra and Killjoy that is a more like passive one. And they're both in the same vibe, honestly. All right. aggressive. G2 Gozens are in hot water. Do they want to push this to that third map? Are they able to do so? Let's head over to our casters, Dag and Athena, to find out more. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I'm honestly, I'm so excited to see how Split plays out. You, you are, you and I were actually having a conversation prior to seeing how Agent Select played out. You were mentioning that you were kind of surprised we see a Cypher instead of a Chamber. Tell, tell me a little bit more. Yeah, I was thinking with the way that SMG is playing, that the confident pick towards that Chamber, mm. maybe they were going to be setting up towards that. I was a little bit excited to see something like sure. that. But again, of course, Cypher is just so overpowered, like you mentioned. He's just so good right now in his Cypher meta that yeah. I I don't blame either team for picking this champion, especially in split. SMG on attack, a flash already, confirming some presence. You see a very standard Viper wall from the Spike attack side and the defensive a. side to counter it. The first first pick already going in favor of Mimi. A great start for G2. Yeah, taking that ramp control is super important. Again, numbers down. Are they just going to group up and hit, I think, going towards heaven, trying to get picked Gage off triggered. or trying to get a pick off in order to capitalize on these numbers? But both these teams, again, playing the patient game, not over rotating, not over committing, just going for those tiny little peaks. I mean, they've gotten this far. And this, again, they still have that Viper wall they can play around. But again, the defensive wall does such a good job of countering this very standard defaulty Viper wall that we're seeing from the attacking side. Yeah, I mean, mimicking the other yeah. team's gas is super important as a Viper, but they are taking that space towards heaven, trying to get a little pick, trying to find a little weakness or a slip up from G2's part in order to capitalize, but... <gasps> Discipline box. Oh, but she managed to look at just the right time. Mimi falls. Roxy feeling some of the pressure, training back with some of her own. Ultimately Killing falls. The site is SMG, so Spike will go down as well. You need to know who was watching Heaven for Mimi. Toxins that was so yeah. unfortunate. And like we said before, how it lands, everything sounds down. different. I think that was a pretty big clue that she did not hear the drop from Heaven. That nade, the paranoia, another kill going in favor of SMG. And Sarah can do nothing against this. SMG drop one. It was really off of the opener, really. I mean, G2 had the numbers lead at the beginning, and SMG took it the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean, 
Again, it seems like Mimi getting a little bit caught off guard in these positions yeah. is kind of costing them a couple of these rounds from the last game. And now this game, I mean, I understand playing up and playing a little bit more aggressive, not over peaking, but still playing in that spot. But who was there to support? Looks yeah. like there was some sort of miscommunication or some sort of misplay in the crossfire. When you want to fall back to sight and you have numbers like that, you need a good crossfire to hold because you are giving up that space. But unfortunately, not much to do here, but we do see the walk up A main. I like this from G2. Oh, hello. <laughs> Surprise. And they get both? Oh. The high beats now here. The trip is going to be a but it's just a ghost. Never mind. The Bulldog was there too. All good. <laughs> It got messy, but all good. Yeah, I mean, just super quick reactions from SMG, like we said. Yeah. They're just like, oh, they're pushing? Let's go back and fight. Let's go Both fight, teams yeah. would react, just run away. And they're like, yeah. oh, well, they're stuck there. But again, SMG with the confidence, looking good. This is where the game really begins, though, now that G2 have a little bit of weaponry to fight back with. Light armor the whole way, rifles, and, you know, given how messy some of that previous round was, I think things still look decently well for SMG. You've got a Vandal and you have two Spectres you're carrying forward, Sheriffs the, the rest of the way. This is fine for SMG, really. Yeah, definitely a convertible round for them mm -hmm. here as they look to take that mid. Super fast take from Canary, but it gets instantly punished by Petra. A very heavy mid control, but not much space that they could take and losing their entry fragger instead. I, I, I like the swagger and the aggression behind that play call, but I mean, Petra just handled it beautifully. You know, given some of these conversations around the role changes and how are G2 gonna respond, you heard Karkis talking about it yesterday, the fact that they felt like they needed to make something different, right? They needed to bring a change into this tournament. Yes, and, I mean, Petra seems to only be getting more comfortable in the role as the tournament goes on. Yeah, and another really good read from G2 here on their defensive Cage side because trigger. they did play a 1 3 1, ready to yep. punish any mid control, trusting that their senties on both sides are just enough to hold it down. We have Cypher still spawning to today, and Omen alone on the B site where SMG is starting to regroup. The flashback site, the wall actually should have prevented Glance from getting flash either way, repositions around Pillar. Petrus here, Shirazi has already taken a little bit of damage, and there it is, the kill found. And yes, sweet, but things seem to be converting. In favor of G2, but hold left. the phone for just a moment. Alexi and Kahibi still in a position to win this one out. It's going to be difficult, but it is doable. Kahibi flashed, has to take a slight step back. How do they handle this? The first flash forward, the shot's just barely missing. And G2 avoid the bonus there on the board. A good round from both sides here, actually. Getting two guns down. Definitely a good sign from both these teams that they are understanding how the other team is playing. The util used on site to get out. I mean, I don't think that SMG should have gotten that many kills. Honestly, I don't think they should have gotten those two kills. The instant shutdown from Petra in mid, as we talked about earlier, just amazing. And Sarah and Petra holding it down. And again, retake looking really clean. G2 starting to clean up a little bit of the loose ends that they were having that was making them lose those, those rounds, the small mistakes. And as we can see, it's starting to pay off here because they had each other's backs in that round. Yeah, a continued focus from the defensive side towards mid as it will often see. Blinded. And split, we're, you know, we're kind of nearing the, this area of split where the beginning of the map is just like an exchange of utility, like yeah. a trade, a molly here, a molly there, a flash here, you know, one for they the other. Pass. Then things settle and then things just explode. Yeah, I mean, that Viper gas towards mid is always annoying to, uh, to deal with and the Viper gas towards A, so both these teams need to get that information past this Viper utility. I mean, the delay in mid is just so strong. They're cycling these smokes, making sure that mid is a lot harder to get than they think it's going to be. They need to use some sort of dog and flash to get up towards mid. But the Ruba and the flash coming in towards best, denying the push out. Neri trying to get that first pick, but Petra denying it once again. Very nicely done. Had enough delay with the nade and the Viper oh, Spit that we talked about, and then the swing out, which is very nicely handled. Mid is just not available right now. Sarah and Petra have done such an exceptional job at denying that space, and then they quickly rotate B. Remember, we saw Petra in this exact position the previous round with 30 HP, gets another kill. <gasps> this time, Alexi just obliterates oh, three of them. Trying. We're back on the multi-kills. We're back on the confidence for SMG. Clan spotted by the Seekers, no real way to keep position concealed. Spike plan. Holy smokes, two fall. Alexi's left alone, Glance with three of her own. 
What wow. is going on? Both sides of these teams just getting multi-frags both ways. Amazing, like truly a brawl at B site. I mean, I did not expect Galaxy to get three there. The round looked almost completely dealt with. But again, just the small little peaks That's from G2, the confidence, like you said, coming in from SMG, allowing them to get these peaks. But Glance absolutely shutting that down, Plus, shutting that punching. idea down. Both these teams are out. Claws are out. And voices are allowed again from the players, from the coaches. Massive round, breaking SMG, back just to Sheriffs. Choosing not to buy into this, really. And you've got a couple of ults on the side of G2 as well. Yeah, it looks like it's trying to be a nice little A split, trying to get that mid control, smoking off towards male. They have the two players outside of A ready to speed up on the mid player's contact. This is something that's looking like a really easy setup. Omen with the spike falling all the way back after getting Sky and Rays into that heaven. And now it's just up to how these players on G2 react because they do have a trip in heaven. It's not going to be easy to get this space. No, yeah, it's going to be really difficult. And you've got Mimi who's playing over the trips Keeps as well. Triggered. I think this this will be tough sledding if they choose to continue to go this way. As if the weapon difference wasn't enough. But try they will. An Aerie already oh. spotted on the first. Unlucky, oh, getting caught with utility out. The flash, there's the swing, and the kill comes to do for Mimi. An Aerie has fallen. A very nice trade, though, out from Kahibi. But again, you know, we talked so much about how this is really going to be difficult space to take, as, yeah, they've gotten a, a kill. They haven't really gotten any more space than they had at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, it was looking a little bit dangerous there for G2, but again, the teamwork of flashing and popping 30 through seconds that smoke left. together, immediately calling Petra over was such a good play, yeah. such a good way to capitalize. I mean, maybe unfortunately just pulling out her flash, but that that happens. You know, and now we're gonna, they're going to commit towards that A, trying to get a pick. Roxy actually denying One that as Cypher. And such a beautiful, beautiful round from G2. It looked a tiny bit scary. Ko Kohaibi spamming through the smoke, getting one, but... The, again, not much you can do on an eco when you're trying to face against a Cypher and Cypher trips other than race satchels, but Mimi again and Petra just playing so well together in this scenario. Yeah, it just really feels like, again, they've done such a good job of establishing mid, allowing them to quickly rotate to the extremities once they figure out where the hit is. Yeah. This is it was spotty at the beginning, but this has become a very nice adaptation out from G2. Yep, now we need to see how SMG is going to react towards this mid hold that they've been trying so hard to get past, but not really successfully doing it. Petra taking this sneaky little peek out, getting hit a lot. We do have to have the sky rotate in order Cage to trigger. heal. So G2 still trying to hold down that mid, showing their presence, showing their pressure, and Raze and Sky from the SMG side still trying to poke and prod and get that info. Poison's off. Four ults on the defensive side. If really everything I could want, you'd imagine. Yeah, from SMG, this is looking like a much slower pace than what we've yeah. normally seen them play at. The dog getting all that info, Petra trying to peek out, but being denied by the Omen smoke. Again, grouping up towards one side. That is kind of how Split is supposed to be played. I sure. mean, you need to get some sort of mid info or you need to execute. But this slow, slow pace is not at all what I was expecting from SMG. No, not at all. I must wait a moment. You see the flash coming over the top of Smoke Control's heaven, and now an area will go forward. Caught by the trip, caught by Roxy, and no real shot to do much more. They're going to commit onto the Otis. Roxy continues to lock the side down. Two kills already found. Reinforcements have arrived, but it might fall onto Roxy on her own. She's still back sight, has taken some damage. Alexi cleans her up. Mimi left by herself. A 1v2 position given away. Oh, just barely missing the shots onto Alexi. Seekers dropped Kahibi. Spike planted. Can she stay alive? Mimi's on the swing oh. and Kaibi's on the trade. Oh my god, Alexi just bringing this round so much closer than it needs to be and then rounding it out. Alexi and Kohaibi, that duo on site, perfectly played. Insane round. Again, like I told you, it's going to come down to these different mechanical things that are making G2 or SMG get the round.
this was actually insane. I did not expect it to go this way at all. No. The, the, the entry was killed almost immediately due to the trip. But SMG was just so patient on their take that they managed to get those kills. They managed to get G2 after they were trying to flood out into sight and punish them. Petra getting the opener with the op. Again, establishing control of the middle of the map. A great start for G2. Yeah, that op, something that they didn't didn't necessarily need, but I think a really good addition to this defense side and immediately moving away from mid towards that A site, putting Petra there with the Cypher, able to rotate three people towards that B. They're ready for this take, but SMG are just farming orbs. I mean, now they have this Viper Pit and they have the Omen ult, and now they have the Sky ult as well. Really good orb farming, just leaving Viper here they made them rotate. They made them second guess, yeah. but it doesn't matter because Mimi is just floating in between both sides. It seems like they're going to end towards Glance and towards Sarah, the two controllers who have done such a good job of controlling the map as is so aptly named. <laughs> now in the face of the Seekers, what will they do with it? A deep flash. Oh, they're TPing onto this as well. The Paranoia is doing a really good job to delay, and then you've got the Molly backside, but Camille's behind them already. They've got the pit down to how are they going to handle all this aggression that's just come out from the side of SMG? They've established almost control. They're going to have a late flank coming in from Kahibi, though. And it's not going to be the difference. It's just coming you left in a 1v2. Spike in hand, but how do they get back out with only 13 seconds left? Roxy down low and weak. She's gotten ones. 10 seconds, 10 seconds has gotten past Pillar. Should be able to get the spike down. Mimi's just so much healthier. Spike planted. It's going to take a massive mistake for this not to go their way. Kamiyu with the fake TP. Daring Mimi to check the smoke. Although the clock is ticking, Kami, you can't sit here forever, and Mimi gets the shots. The kills go in favor of G2, and so will the round. Oh my god, these Ooh. rounds are so back and forth and back and forth. The second I think someone is winning, the other team just absolutely obliterates, and then there's trades on trades. It just shows how good both these teams are at playing crossfires, at playing together, at playing trades, and G2 was out on site so fast that even though Camille TP'd backside, she still couldn't catch them off guard when they were rotating into that site. And again, just a beautiful round here by Mimi. So patient, so patient for to peak and play absolutely amazingly. A ton of discipline from the star of G2. And again, it was off the opener of the pick in the uh, on the middle of the map from the op, yeah. which is still in line in the hands of Petra. Yep, she is going back towards that mid to try to see if she gets a pick. Again, holding that sewers line, the flash is going past her, and she does manage to get it down on Alexi. They did not learn from their mistakes. This mid is being absolutely shut down by G2, and SMG does not have an answer to it yet. Yeah, it's just been so difficult for them yeah. to get any yeah, space the there. And as we've talked about a little bit, the, the nature of the map, like you're going to have a really hard time finding success on attack side split if you can't control mid. Yeah. I mean, a team, they're not even playing that heavy oh, towards mid. Yeah, they're really not. Like some some teams, you know, they're one 3 one mid. Okay, great, sites are open, but it's only two players towards mid. And one of those players is super fast at rotating, and they still cannot get through on the attacker's side, even though it is only two players holding it down. Oh, we're committing. Oh, oh my. Yeah, we're committing indeed. Look at that trip. I don't know how the trip didn't land. I don't know how the showstopper landed. You still got Roxy backside. Finally cleared. It got messy for a second, but things seem to be stabilizing as Roxy locks the site down. Three on the round for her. Shirazi left alone. 30 seconds left. And that I'm really surprised that they committed that as hard as they did. Yeah, I mean, popping the ult, it was a winning condition, I guess, to try to turn the round around but again like such a weird way because they did not have any like aiming space like that hard and we have Shirazi trying to play and get a pick but nothing literally nothing they did not have enough space they did not have enough information to do that do it again. and like you said the cypher trips so scary to play against yeah. we talked about this earlier on split cypher so hard to play against especially as a raise unless you're clearing those with the sky dog or something Again, I don't know. That was that was pretty wild to watch. I think on an eco, sending your Razel, unless you have a solid plan on how you're going to punish these players, not necessarily my favorite choice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I agree with you entirely. SMG calling a timeout. They find themselves down two rounds with 
a gun round just on the other side of this very momentary break. I think, you know, you and I have talked about this a ton. They've got to find some room to breathe across the middle of the map. And I don't know if that just looks like applying some pressure on site to draw the rotations out from mid so that then they can breathe and, and move or whatever it is. But I think if they continue to persist this way, it's going to be a great half for G2. Yeah, I mean, they tried going fast. They tried going slow. They tried using util. They tried just walking up. None of them seemed to have an answer for how to contest this. And like I said, they were just playing two players towards mid. It's not like G2 is putting too much heavy pressure towards mid. Again, Pressuring extra armies, it could work, but also making sure that they're using the correct util, making sure that they're using that Sky Dog effectively, running up with it, ignoring the Viper Orb, and making sure they have that confidence to just go through, because cycling those smokes and orbs, you're never going to be able to just wait it out. Right, yeah. I mean, it's so difficult to deal with. They last forever. Yeah. Where do SMG go from here? Lean towards A with some presence mid, but take a look at Petra's got a, a different angle. I don't... My memory might be failing me here, but I don't remember her having this angle out from Garage. It's primarily been mid. Yeah, Boys taking her off towards mid and rotating off seems to have been the play, but a super fast push into Robes and Mary getting the pick with the judge. That was the answer that they needed, but Mimi immediately trading her out, shutting down all of that, but they still commit to the A split here. That was an excellent response. We were asking, how are they going to get mid control? That's how you do it. And judge. not only do that, yeah, <laughs> Satchel, Judge, Flash, win game. That Not only that, though, Shirazi also got so far up. Look at how deep this Viper wall is. It's going to give them so much room to breathe A. It's going to force G2 to play really far back here. Yeah, I mean, really, really good wall. But again, we still have Roxy just alive, yeah, yep. on site, ready. She has her trip up. She's pulling so patient. She's peeking into that heaven. They don't care about heaven because at the end of the day, SMG has to get onto the site and push control. They are aware that spawn is open, but that is not an issue because they're going to hold that site down, play across yeah, fire. Roxy trying to stay alive, and the execute starts. Mimi gets caught. Roxy gets caught too. It seemed like Mimi just tried catching a cheeky little area there to catch him slipping, but on the other side of the timeout, SMG find massive success. And again, it was off the flash, the double satchel mid, and a judge. Uh, in the face of whoever was unfortunately there. I think it was Sarah uh, at the beginning. A brutal way to go, but some room to breathe for SMG. Yeah, well played. They sped up the pace of the round at the beginning and then ended towards that A again. The Viper Wall Cover going putting out. up some sort of pressure, forcing them to play onto that site. So, so dangerous because what ended up happening was Omen blinded Roxy off and Mimi was stuck in a one and done position in hell. So again, Crossfires need to be played in those sort of scenarios where they know they have to play on site. They know they're giving up so much space towards heaven and spawn. So they have to be able to play together in a way that they can see all the choke points around them. Because again, they could have just pushed spawn and like gone right behind them, but they just chose to leave that open. So again, understandably, Mimi went towards that hell spawn in order to not be seen by screens, but ended up shooting her in the foot because the omen blind made Roxy not be able to support her in whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, it was really well considered by SMG when you think about how they chose to play that out, because you're right, you you put them in a damned if you do, damned if you don't, yeah. right? If you play off site, you've lost sight, yeah. it's going to be difficult to retake. If you play on, you're screwed. Exactly. And that netted them some success. Alexi getting some info with the flash early on towards Vents. And that seems to be, again, an adaptation. Because remember, in the previous round, we saw Petra set up Garage. Yeah. Not the case this time, given some of the investment of utility that we saw from SMG towards mid. Yep, the Viper out going down off of that off contact, allowing Petra to go rotate that off Page towards three. B, but she doesn't know that it's the wrong site because SMG's all Page grouped three. up outside of A main. Well, you you're gonna hear it now. You see the nades, you see the smokes, and everyone going above oh. the trips, and that's all right. <laughs> Mimi got the kill. It was messy for a moment. Roxy's still alive. Pit's still in play, but it's gonna go down in just a moment as Roxy continues. Down, My goodness, a. she's so freaking One stalwart enemy remaining. on A. It's outrageous. Now Kami, you left alone. Spike out of hand. And no real options to work with. Yeah, Roxy being an absolute beast on site, showing why she's a sentinel, why she's playing on site. Not scared to get off and play with her trips. But again, a 1v3, not looking too good for SMG seconds left. here. G2 just creeping out. And Petra with the op. I mean, 
That was so well played by Roxy, just staying alive, making sure she's on site. And Nari needs to buy a phantom. Because <laughs> on Vine, so that satchel stuff was working. Yeah. And now she's satcheling in with a vandal. It's not working as well as it should. I mean, that trip, so good. Roxy playing for so long that no one could get a trade here. I mean, looking a little bit like an executional error from SMG's side that not a single trade could be made. But again, G2, Roxy, man, she played that well. We had done so well. We yeah. we had gone a full almost map and a half. We almost made it. We almost. Tech pause, we almost made it. But alas, <laughs> here we are with the tech pause uh, in play. Once we know what's going on, uh, we will let you all know. But yeah, I, I think again we've got to talk about how how good Roxy has been as an anchor. We talk. We've got to talk about how good. G2 continue to be at controlling mid map, and then once they feel where the pressure is, they very quickly rotate out. Mimi being able to be there early on to save the day for Roxy yeah. allowed Roxy to get those two kills back screens. It was very nicely played. Yeah, I mean, right now for SMG, it's not looking too good. I mean, they're struggling towards mid. They're struggling towards A. They're trying to have these splits, but they can't really manage them because the, the early round game where they're trying to get that space in mid is just absolutely not working for them. So the A execute, yeah, it was okay, but what are you gonna do against Roxy? Right. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing way more B pressure here coming in from SMG because they know that that's the weak side. They know that Omen is playing there. They know that they're playing towards mid in order to rotate towards that B Raptors and play towards them. So. I think right now that's probably an answer that they need that they're gonna try doing. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if Petra just sets up that off in B main and starts pressuring back towards SMG. I mean, Petra even has been doing such a good job. Yeah. She ops mid, rotates off yep. immediately. Ops B main, no one's there, rotates off. Ops towards ropes, rotates towards A. <laughs> like, it's such a good such a good setup for Petra in order to be having these lines and like giving them that space. We'll see how they choose to adapt. Again, it was on the other side of a timeout that it felt like SMG had found a little bit of room to work with. The adaptations in the chess match continue between these two squads, and it's been a gift of a series already. I mean, you think about how close map one was, how close this first half has been. It wasn't really until the end of the first map that SMG kind of ran away with it, and yeah. finally were able to, you know, kind of put G2 away, but that just does not feel like the case this map. Yeah, and split specifically, it is a little bit rough on the attack yeah. side. Yeah. So that being said, SMG with four rounds, it's not bad. Yeah. It yeah. really isn't. But the biggest issue that SMG is facing is that they cannot find their footing in order to set their own pace at the game. It really feels like they're playing towards G2's pace. And G2 doing such a good job at shutting down, rotating, shutting down again. The only small little mistakes that they've been making in those like small crossfire scenarios or giving up a little bit too much space has been the reason for the downfall of a couple of these maps. But yep. other than that, they are looking solid on yep. the defense side. No, yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree with you. Again, the tech pause, gear. Gear. Gear, I hate when gear. Happens. Don't you just hate it when gear? Yeah, I hate when gear. Ugh. That's the worst. Gear. Uh, again, gear. But um, we are working to get back into the action very quickly. Again, a 1-0 series lead in favor of SMG. Sitting pretty close things out on buying 13-8. But now they find themselves in a bit of a different story here on split. You mentioned how the attack side of split tends to be problematic. You? So you get four, you get five round. That's, that's, a, that's, I mean, that's okay. Good. Yeah, we'll take those. Yeah. Where do they go from here? They have four four rifles. They've really invested into this. It's just Alexi with the sheriff. Yeah. Oh, Roxy's really far ahead of this. You've got to be careful. Yeah, she may have been off a bit more than she could chew. Off of the, the dog, tries to take some space, gets caught, gives up uh, the neural theft as well. We were just gassing up Roxy on how well that she's playing, how patient she's playing on site. And immediately, she has to make us eat our words because peeking <laughs> into that A main, yes, they tried to do it with the util. It was unfortunate, but Kahibi actually getting the pick and regrouping towards that B site to go instantly into an execute. Such a good response. Mimi's here to help, but they've already gotten around Pillar, and I don't know that Mimi knows. Oh, Glance was there to help. They hold the line. It's actually Mimi who's the surprise in the face of the flash. Somehow, Roomba not clearing him out. Mimi's still here. 
This has been so patient. These crossfires that they've set up are gorgeous. I don't know how SMG is getting past this, but they managed to anyway. Mimi continues to be the thorn in their side as a third kill goes in favor of the initiator. Kahibi trying to dodge bullet, trying to dodge the op to stay alive. Still so much to do. The spike not even in hand. You've got to deal with Petra. <gasps> Success. That's three on the round. A 1v1. Can Mimi put this away? She's already got three kills. Make that four. Oh the round for G2. Mimi. Oh my god. Mimi. What a round. That was crazy. Man, G2 rotated so fast. Petra instantly giving up that midline, setting her off towards that A ramp. They instantly knew that SMG was going towards me. They did not commit to A. And the super quick response, Mimi and Glance setting up that perfect crossfire. Exactly what I told you earlier, when these crossfires are so important and they got it down. That is the reason why G2 are playing this so well now. Ooh. Again, opting for aggression mid. You know, we saw it a couple of rounds ago. It was with the Judge. This time, it's with the Bucky. And there's no one here but Petra popping the Showstopper, not finding any a target. Yeah, this mid control going super fast. SMG finally tired of playing at G2's pace, taking it into their own hands, putting pressure towards that ropes. But we do have the whole team in mid here. Not a single player from SMG's side towards the mains. They don't know where they're going to end. Poking and prodding, breaking Cypher Cam, breaking Util. Really good space taken, but where they end is going to be so important because there are three players ready with the off towards this B side. The Raptors peak, but Petra wins. The paranoia out. They got the deep Viper's wall that we saw a couple of rounds ago, this time towards B. And they committed on this really hard. The paranoia out from Lance. Trazi still somehow lands a shot with a Bulldog and a Classic. They've gotten out onto the site. They've got numbers. They've even gotten the op out of Petra's hands into the hands of Shirazi. Spike oh planted. my goodness, what a response from SMG, just absolutely shutting it down. Only from B Heaven, which is insane, but G2 trying to figure out a retake with these numbers. Here. Kahai B, spotting Good Sarah. Shot. A one for one does not add up when you find yourself in a 3v5. One enemy remaining. It's all on to Roxy. A 1v4, Ooh. holy Anthony smokes. All right. Neural theft, keeping things close. She already gotten it onto two. Time is short, though. This One has to be remaining. fast. Roxy, three on I'm the round. For waiting for the it swing, no and the smoke is going to cause problems. Could she hold it the whole way? Kami, you just saw the other side of the smoke. Oh, oh. I don't know that she has time. This is going to be outrageous, oh, and we're not going to see it, but I'm assuming it plays out. What a round from Roxy. Unbelievable. That was absolutely insane. SMG scrambling in order to get back into B main, but not enough time because Roxy just takes that peak, does not care. What a Red Bull clutch. Look at this spray chance for Doug. Holy. Enemy remaining. I mean, unbelievable. Managed to get it to half, and that was the difference maker. Even took the damage down to 11 HP. I mean, if that's not a spark, I'm not really sure what is. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, Roxy really making it up for us because she did go towards that main, but again, showing who she is with Sensei. Yesterday, we spoke with SMG's and Aerie about that wild quadruple duelist comp that broke the internet in today's matchup against G2. Take a listen. Hi everyone, my name is Aneri, I'm from Team SMG. I feel very excited and relieved because our first map, it was kind of a disaster because we picked the wrong agents and we made a mistake. It worked out and I think I can give ideas to the coach that, hey, maybe we can play for duos next time in the future also. But yeah, we kind of adapted to what we picked at Lotus and then we finished it out. It was a good score, 13 and 4, I think. They have the benefit of playing in the post plan of forcing EG to be the ones to make a move. It's just a tap, it's just One a fake. The second remaining. from the first go falls, the second does too. Oh a Red goodness. Bull clutch as SMG gets a series point. As for my next matchup against G2, I have always watched their games a lot. They're very super good, their firepower is super strong, and I think they have super good executions. So I am quite excited for this matchup because I think it would be like a super hard matchup, but I think it's quite exciting. I think. Breath, absolute heroics from Roxy and the pop-off on stage. G2 getting back to the G2 that we know and expect. 
on the other side of that I half, mean, Athena. That was crazy, Roxy. I mean, you can see she is still smiling from that clutch. What a round and what a way to end the half. I mean, we were talking about how it is attack sided. Four rounds on attack. It's doable, but G2 is just looking so clean in the last few rounds that I think when it comes to this, we're going to have to see a lot more right. confidence from SMG. Well, confidence isn't something that they've lacked uh, domestically or internationally, so <laughs> we expect to have, we expect them to have more of that. And we already see some aggressive plays towards Garage. Look at that. A jump spot out from Garage, a TP across. They're already denying space. Yeah, fighting for that B main control. They don't care about B heaven. We have Cypher going to be rotating towards that, but they understand that that is space that they're giving up, and they're competing for that B main status, allowing their team to rotate. Really, really interesting. But wow. Mimi just walking up on Shirazi in ropes. That is not how you want to be playing that, trying to do a trap set, but it did not work out. No. They're going to continue to scale up into heaven too. Kahibi's going to have to back off. The satchel out on site. They know they have two members in garage crunched. Petra's not able to take care of them. Roxy's not either, but Mimi does. Of course it's Mimi who does. Who else? They've gotten the site. They have the spike. And I imagine it's going down. <laughs> yeah, Alexi Kohaibi in this 2v3. But again, numbers speak louder than words. But Kohaibi with one not being able to clutch it out. What a round. I mean, these two players took B main. Where they had such a heavy B main snake? presence. It would have worked if they had just picked one of the sides to fight. But unfortunately, that death towards ropes meant that B heaven was on the weaker side and that they were getting crunched from both sides of the map. Like, that was so unfortunate for SMG. I saw the vision, but it did not work out because G2 saw it too. Yeah. And absolutely Mimi saw it. <laughs> yeah, Mimi. Well, Mimi happened. Yeah, Mimi happened. And I, then Mimi. SMG, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. It seems like we're just destined for Haven at this point as G2. It seemed like a situation where SMG honestly desperately needed that pistol, and they have so much they can work with here. Petra's got a Vandal. They've invested so much, wanting to put this map away, wanting to make sure they go the distance. Yep, and a reminder, Doug, that this is SMG's pick. Yeah for maps, so interested to see how confident they are. Obviously, this pistol round not going to be much of a caliber for what we know SMG is going to be doing, but the contact play coming in from G2, just walking up, knowing that they're confident, that they're heavy towards mid, clearing the sights together, free sight, SMG not much to work with now, but they do have a fast flank. Fast flank and pistols, a frenzy to work with, although that's going to be coming up from heaven. I imagine that'll be difficult to find success with. Shirazi getting one, trampling forward, upgrading weapon, and all of a sudden this is a bit more of a fair fight, but doesn't matter as Petra wins that out nonetheless. Hey, you imagine G2 here get through this, keep as many weapons as they can, get to 10 and maybe farm a couple of orbs on the way out via the kills of Alexi Kahibi and continue to try to set them up to potentially win this next bonus and put the map away. Yeah, G2 looking to not lose as many, any more guns here because they did already lose the one towards B main. They're falling back together in the group and we're gonna see Kohibi and Alexi die towards that spike just to see them get the full buy for the next gun. This is an ever, ever pivotal round, really, in, in the grand scheme of things, because, you know, you imagine the first rifle round for SMG in the second half. This is, I mean, you you have to win now, right? I mean, like, you've got to win this round. They literally need this round, because yeah. if they lose this round, it will be 11 rounds for G2, and they're going to be broke. They're going to have to force some crazy buy in order to play for the win. But again, so important, and the way that they're going to be playing it is going to be against an A rush. And it's so difficult too because this this bonus from G2 is not nothing. They've got three rifles of all kinds. I mean, they've got the Bulldog, they've got the Phantom, and they have the Vandal. This is not just like Spectres or Stingers and, and pistols. Yeah, definitely going to be hard, but we actually see them contacting up towards that heaven, trying to punish the Cypher setup, the Cypher cam, looking to find anything. They do spot a player towards heaven and instead have rotated to play for the site. Sky still alive on site, playing with the trips. Ropes is open, mid is open, 
Spawn is starting to get close, but there's so much space here for G2 to take. The nice thing from SMG, though, is they've denied a lot of space, so you're starting to see some of these rotates toward today already. You've got Raze, who's already halfway through. Petra satcheling got on the side, caught by the trip. The spam not landing. Kahibi somehow, excuse me, Alexi somehow still alive. And SMG slammed the door on this hit. Unless Petra can kick it down once more. It's Petra, an airy, a 1v1. Petra, the weaker of the two. Having to reposition, excuse me, Kami, you and Shirazi still have plenty to work with. Got the paranoia, really no shot for Petra. And a great round from SMG. Yeah, looking really, really good with the rotates. Like you said, Omen taking that full beaming control, allowed SMG to rotate, allowed Shirazi to be in that spawn, looking at Heaven and Peek out the smoke to get these beautiful kills that just turn the round around into their favor. And now you're getting this final kill. Such a good start for SMG on their gun round, looking like they have a read with the info. And they're gonna start to set up towards this mid, the 1-3-1. One, one. Right, we talked about how much SMG needed that round. They found it with great success. But you're really, I mean, you're really just kind of getting started on this comeback that you're gonna have to pull off. Down five rounds. But a heavy investment made, you talked about it. This 1-3-1 defensive setup is gonna force G2 to look elsewhere. I mean, it's really interesting because they are opting to play double up in that ropes, in that vents area. Mm. They tried playing that little uh, trap setup, but again, Sky falling off to get that information towards aiming. Super important that they see the Viper lurking, but again, now they're playing weaker towards mid. Oh, Alexi with the kill on Petra. As soon as I said that, she rotated right in time. But Mimi getting a kill and trade for trade for trade happening towards Spike mid. It is a war zone in mid. And Spike has been dropped by G2. Ooh. I thought that was going to be ugly to watch for a second. Sarah getting the kill and Roxy on the extremity too. Do they know? I don't think they know. Kahibi's right behind them. I have the Spike. They've managed to pick up the spike. They've managed to establish exactly control B yeah. and the neural theft will give that away. Kahibi stuck between a rock and a hard place. Left. She's walking up towards heaven. Not much else that she can do. I Cage mean, the trigger. cam spots her out. The neural theft spots her out. She's Cage in a 1v2. It's probably Khan that Roxy is low and that this is planted. winnable. But again, the Viper has so much, or sorry, the Viper has her orb to deny the B main. Push. Like, there's just so much against her right now. They're playing this crossfire peak off me in spawn. They're both so weak. They're both so weak. That's the first to fall. The second oh does too. 61 HP amongst both, and Kahibi laughs in the face of it. The defuse comes through as SMG get that round. Dude, Kahibi winning the round that SMG desperately needs as well. This could be a momentum turner right here. Roxy, 5 HP, really needed to stay alive for her teammate. The peak off me did not work. Kohaibi, that is the fragging IGL that we know and love from SMG, just showing us why she's here. Yo, that was a cold killer smile, too. <laughs> it wasn't a pop-off. It was just like a very gentle, like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> Fist bump. The crowd popped up harder than she did. Yeah, and a timeout here, definitely a lot to talk out, talk about from yeah. both these teams. I mean, the double vent setup from SMG is so interesting because they got punished for it once, and they haven't been able to do much with it. The sky looking to rotate between that mid and A heaven to get information, to fight mid if they need to, a nice little float. But again, if red, like that is really, really hard to counter because it's like yeah, absolutely. you have sky and viper in heaven in, in ropes and then you have raid in heaven i would just avoid a because yeah. that's like three people towards a including right. your sky including your cypher just go so really interesting to see how gt is going to kind of wrap their heads around this but smg still sticking with i think they're going to stick with what they know because it is working out for them if it ain't broke Four rounds separating the two squads. You got a judge in the hands of Petra, two sheriffs, and then two bulldogs. Meanwhile, for SMG, you're healthy. You've got the neural theft okay. from Kahibi, who's having an exceptional performance here. 17 and 10 for the Sentinel. 
Yep, mid looking to be held by just the Viper this time. I was talking about that rope setup, which they're opting not to do. And G2 actually taking their judge into ropes. This is actually a good read by SMG. Yes, they're losing a lot of space, but what are they going to do with this judge now? Because they have put themselves in the long range positions that they have to fight towards A. And a judge is not going to help with that. And we have this full oh, beaming this control spot. from Raze and Omen. So Cypher and Sky should be ready to play for an A hit. Here. Chi too quietly considering where they want to go. And if they do commit to this A hit, you're going to go into the T set, the Cypher setup. You've got Alexi who's going to be playing here as well. First flash just now used, excuse me, second flash now used. Going to have to wait a bit before we get one of those back online. And that's the window that G2 want to push in. The nade, making sure there's no one playing down in hell. The judge from that distance, what? Either way, Kaibi's there for the trade. She's going to have to deal with so much. The flood overwhelms her. She drowns Mimi now there with the trade. The sheriff finding value. 30 seconds left. Glance weak, though. Very weak. Just got a little bit weaker. What can Shirazi do off the swing? Trying to find value out for that paranoia, and they just mow over what G2 had on the site. Yes, it was a lighter buy, and it caused some problems, but SMG walk away on top. Yep, that raise nade just delaying that plant for so long that it gave them time to set up in that spawn with the paranoia in order to retake 3v3. They made it so, so easy. They made it look so easy, but again, Petra with that entry. That should not have happened for Alexi but behind me immediately getting the trade. This was a really great retake, really great setup. They delayed the bombs for so, so, so long that it was just really well done. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Big same. Big same. We got another tech pause. Ah. So we will, we will let you all know what's going on um, again. An excellent read from SMG, right? We, we got to talk again about the fact that, you know, in the previous time out, the double uh, rope setup that the defense was showing, Petra yeah. decides, all right, we're just going to satchel into that. Yeah. There's nobody there. Yeah. It was beautifully handled. Yeah, like I said, like they got, G2 got so much space. They thought they could do something with it. For a second, it did look like they could when Alexi got picked on that site. But again, like they knew that they had to play back. They knew that yeah. G2 was an equal. They were ready to play those far back positions where they were tradable. Kohaibi coming out of that smoke. Yes, it was a little bit risky, but getting two was so, so worth it. Now, I don't know if G2 knows this, but SMG has been taking D main for free yeah, every yeah. round mm -hmm. so far. For free. All they've been doing is throwing maybe an omen smoke, maybe just a one way. That's about it. They haven't needed to use any resources. And now if G2 tries to come back towards B main, they haven't seen this yet. Yeah. The one time that they went in B main is when Roxy just kind of lurked for free into B main. They don't know that they're holding it down. Mm. So we don't even know if they're setting up a trap. They're ready to fight with this paranoia and raise nade. It's going to be super dangerous so now they need some sort of answer to how smg is playing and it's kind of like what we said before with g2 like g2 starting not to find the answers that they need as well so again definitely a defense side of map we're seeing it play out here yep. the score line is really really close when you think about it because they were down they only the smg only had four rounds coming into this half and they seem to have built back up the momentum to get to seven Got to seven and again to go to go back a little bit further. If it wasn't for Roxy's heroics yeah. to close out the half, I mean we're talking 10-8 right now, and who knows the defensive side of split proving to be the problem as uh, Gear strikes again. Uh, gear two maybe. Oh, Gear two. No. Man. All right, my bad. Gear two. My bad. <laughs> you know, that, uh, maybe uh, ten years. <laughs> uh, it does seem to be something on the on the SMG side of things, as the referee is uh, very intently working with SMG to figure out what's going on. I'm being told by the good people behind the scenes that it is indeed a keyboard issue. So once we get that situated and rectified, we'll jump back into the action. It's a nail biter that's gone down between these two squads. Just three rounds separating them, an eight for half in favor of G2, and we've been we've been able to witness a pretty outrageous comeback from SMG, all things considered. That's not quite done, but it's got the makings of it.
Yeah, so we were talking about how Raze and Omen were taking B main. As soon as we said that, they switched up the setup. They have Omen playing with a Cypher trip towards B main, and Cypher just sprinting all the way across the A to place another one, setting up their Cypher cam and trip. What a crazy setup now. Cypher being able to hold down both sides with trips. Mid is completely open. Cypher just sitting with Sky towards A, looking like they're going to be fighting for A heaven, giving that up that A site. And we still have the ult, Raze ult on a Nary. This trap could be super important. Do they fall for it? Roxy clearing the first trip and deciding to go a little bit further. Sarah falls. There's the showstopper that you mentioned onto Roxy. Nary trying to get ahead of the swing, ahead of the flash. Mimi's able to finally counter back a little bit, but as things slow down for just a moment, she looks around and realizes that her team's been decimated. It's just Glance and Mimi left. Last player standing. And that quickly changes to just Mimi. Cover going out. Dang, that was an omen diff right there. Wow. <laughs> and Kamiyu ending the round. Oh my goodness, what a setup from SMG. They were so ready for that A Heaven split. Like I said, the Viper Wall comes down, the Flash comes out, Alexi spamming through the Cypher Cage, and Neri's here ready with her showstopper. Such a good read. I mean, this A Heaven was shut down, it was locked down, and that Cypher setup was just beautiful. A little bit risky because they did take some time getting back towards that A site, but it's not going to be a problem this round because Cypher is fully set up towards that B site, and A is held by three of these players. Hit across mid. The dog's going to spot a little bit, but the counter paranoia is great. Roxy's still pushing forward, though. Cabbage is in her lap. Has to take a step back. Upgrades a weapon. And any attempt at a fast, aggressive hit towards A is instantly stuffed. Yep, G2 forcing a buyout and not getting that much into it because Viper has ulted towards mid. Cypher trip still up for SMG at B. They know it's going to be an A hit, but we see the G2 players dropping into vents, taking that space, trying to split with this sky ult. This is going to be so detrimental for Shirazi unless she holds it down. Pushed out of her ult, but it doesn't matter because G2 is going back to A. They bullied her out of her pit. The pit will fall, but you're right. It was all just a ruse. It was all just enough to push them back. They want to end A. And you've got Alexi, who's close by. Kamiyu has now joined, as has Kohaibi. How do they go about this? Flashback site. Alexi just so weak. Scatter. Committing the ult is Glance to get off site. Leaving Mimi all to her lonesome with Roxy not too far off. But this ramp hold is going to be everything. They push into the orb. Alexi, they're weak. A one for one. Can they find another? No, it's Shirazi who gets both. Still so weak. Roxy trying to turn the flash, and it's not enough. SMG get another. That was beautifully played by SMG in a 4v4 retake. They know that the numbers are equal. They hear the Omen TP. They only assume that they've gotten off site, but that ramp fight was both teams fighting for it and SMG coming out on top because they had the util. They had more numbers towards that ramp. Roxy again trying to hold it down and held so, so hard to be in that position when you're up versus just a stampede. And this kind of goes back to how they were playing earlier on Bind, where it was three or four of them just running in a yeah. wolf pack mentality, pushing towards G2. And not much could be done because, again, tactical pause I think is needed for G2. They forced that round. Yeah. Their they, money is a little messed up. Yeah, we'll have to see what it looks like. I, yeah, I think you're right. It's not, it, it's not great, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll see. They invested the Seekers to get the pit out of the way, so it wasn't just even in the finances. Yeah. It wasn't just in the economy. From a financial perspective, it was an alt economy as well that's gotten things so dire and so close here. And again, I want to bring people back to some of the history that's at stake right now. 35-0 for SMG and they're a couple of rounds away from pulling off a comeback from 2-0-ing the defending champions and from keeping this streak alive. This has been an outrageous performance from Team SMG. Yeah, SMG, I put them as my dark horse for a reason. This team is looking good, it's looking solid, but that does not take away from G2, man. I mean, this team, they still have number advantage in match 
map, sorry, in map round numbers. Like they are still here to play. They have the result. They have the Viper Pit. All they have to do is get onto site. All they have to do is figure out where the loophole is in the defenses of SMG. And if anyone can do it, I think G2 can. Light armor for all of them. And they have still have two ults. They have Petra's Showstopper and then Sarah's Viper's Pit. It's time to hunt. No intent whatsoever on playing mid. I, they've just kind of given up on it for now. Maybe it's, it'll be a bit delayed and they'll do it later on in the round, but they're just not interested in the, for the time being. Yeah, looking like they might try to punish this Vents player, but little do they know that the Vents player has already left. Now, both of G2 Sentinels Toxins working up towards up. this a round, trying to find anything that they can, trying to break this Cypher util in order to put some pressure on SMG's side out. and make them rotate. But alas, not much is going to happen because they still have all the info. They still have all the space towards mid. They know that nothing's going to happen. <laughs> and then Aerie getting a pick on Dominion is going to be enough. Another wars on a mid here. Oh. Oh. Unbelievable. It gets traded. Just when it felt like they had an advantage, just when it felt like they had some breathing room. But either way, Roxy now getting the kill onto Kahibi, getting the neural theft online, getting a little bit more room as Alexi just barely stays alive. Got caught with utility out. Kamiyu has joined the fray. The paranoia out as well. Try to anchor back out onto the side. Alexi's there. Still good for it. The spike is going to go up towards heaven. And I wonder, yeah, they're just going to flip. The spike's going out. It's going towards B. Roxy managed to slip the net. She's going to get out of there undetected. Oh my goodness, such a fast reaction from Camille TPing onto site and helping her teammate Alexi. But again, Spike is going to be planted towards that B site. They're going to be pushed towards spawn. And SMG is opting to actually split up on this retake. We have one going towards B main, which is going to be a little bit of stress because like you said, the bomb has been flipped to the other side. Omen towards spawn, pushing towards this. Are they expecting Alexi who's going to be on the flank though? Or is Kami oh, going to do it on her own? Yes, yes she will! What a play from Kami, you were tied! Oh my goodness, Camille just showing that it doesn't matter if they're split up because she can hold her own, the 2v1. Oh my goodness, what a round. That was crazy. I mean, the TP, the play towards sight, the paranoia, holding, the patience, the strength, the flick. Oh my god, that was do, okay, Camille is the MVP of that round, playing towards B, not having any action the whole time, and just pulling that out of the hat, saying that she's tired of not seeing anyone, and she's here to play. Six rounds in a row for the number one seed from the APAC region. Just when they thought, Haven's inevitable, right? There's no way G2 fumble this. What a response from SMG. Holy smokes, and 10-10, it is all tied up. A buy coming in from both of these teams still. G2 actually doing really well with their economy, making sure they can always buy for the next round. But yes, another setup where they're giving up that mid. They don't care about mid anymore because they have a crazy, crazy A setup to punish those lurks that almost won the round for G2 last round. I mean, you're reaching in the playbook here at this point, right? I mean, you lose six rounds in a row, you've got to be wondering what the heck do we do, right? Yep. Like, what works? And if I'm not mistaken, both timeouts have been burned. So I don't know that that's even really an option. Yeah, looking like a beast, but now they're walking up into heaven, trying to contact up Petra and Mimi. Cypher lagging behind a little bit. The nades being thrown, pushing Shirazi off. But Omen's left. alone on no set, way. but Camille does not care, dude. No Two way. kills. Looking for the third and finds it. The fourth not going to connect, but the damage has been done. Remaining. Can they push it back? Glance left in a 1v2. Wondering how they've gotten to this point once more. Now with 13 seconds left, Amali's going to deny, deny the plant for just a moment. Finally finding the breathing room, finding the space, getting the spike down. There it is. Shirazi on the swing glance with no real options. And SMG with an outrageous comeback. They've taken the lead. I was just talking about Camille and she is here. 
Camille is literally the MVP of this map for SMG. They need to thank her. They need to shake her hand after this game because the things that she is pulling out these past two rounds to win the game is just insane. The Omen hold peaking and peaking and getting two, almost getting a, getting a third, sorry, almost, almost getting, getting a fourth. fourth. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what a round, what a hold. G2 now, they desperately need an answer coming into this. But that's the problem. What What's the answer, right? <laughs> what, what do they try? Seven rounds in a row. 11, 10. Oh, my goodness. But the good thing is G2, again, I just talked about this, doing so well, making sure that they can buy every single round. Even if it's a light armor, they're still managing to buy, oh still God. managing to keep it close. But they need this round. They need to tie it up, opting for some mid control. But again, the Molly, the Orb, the Viper Util is so hard to counter in this scenario. That deep paranoia, not going to connect onto anything. But again, we've got, what, 35 seconds burned off the clock already with not a ton of space gained. Roxy, who's been so diligent in clearing out the cam, this time gets a little bit further up, ultimately clears the cam out. And they still have some time to feel things out here. Yep, this lurk from Roxy, they know she's here. They're not afraid of her because She's broken stuff. She's gone in this lurk spot before, and they know it. Yeah. But they're giving up the B side duck. They're opting to push down mid. And they have no idea. I mean, Roxy's so far up, gets a massive kill. It's The map has just been flipped at this point. The attack side left. is going to be playing from the defensive side of spawn. They've got a deep trip to make sure there's no rotate coming through there. It's all going to be what's behind them, though. And they're That's aware to it. it. <gasps> Mimi well, knew, but Kami used her on the kill anyway. They've got the pit down. Damn it. The charges. And the ult cleared out. They're going to try to hull it out onto the site. We've got to be careful. Alexi's going to be on a late flank, too. But it seems like Roxy's ahead of it. The dog's going to give the position away. Kamiyu playing in, playing up. Pit's still a problem. This kill is massive. If they can work this out. Spike ticking away. Time is up. The yes in. Shirazi getting two. Alexi left alone. A 1v2. The pit's still a problem. She's gotten it down to one. She's got the secret sword with two. Trying to bully Sarah out of the way. Trying to land the bullets through the Seekers and cannot. Alexi weak. Oh Alexi God. gets the shots. And SMG get the round. But they're not going to get the defuse. There was just not enough time. It was all too delayed. Oh my gosh. What a crazy round from both of these teams. I mean, SMG's reaction to walk down mid almost winning them the round. But the round is way too close. G2 is not going to be happy that they won that round so, so, so messily. SMG showing it doesn't matter because they are still here. G2, Bulldog, and a Guardian and Light Armor versus full Vandals. Full armor. They still have Cypher ult. This is going to be a really hard round for G2 to win. Tied at 11, and of course, we wouldn't have it any other way. G2 pushing forward towards A. And again, SMG are glad to face it. They're glad to take these fights. But they may have been overwhelmed. I have retrieved the They have so much space towards A. Yeah, it looks like G2 took a, took a page out of SMG's playbook of walking up together, having that wolf pack mentality, and Spike it worked planted. out perfectly for them. Two players on the flank, but they oh, are making yeah. so much noise. The trip catching off Raze and knowing that Raze is sitting here. Omen Paranoia trying to punish and delay, but not much else going on. The blind coming in from SMG trying to capitalize. They need to speed up on this retake. Viper just sitting in heaven. Very forward. They don't have ramps control. The timing on this is huge from Glance. One there it is. Remaining. The first Roxy on the second. An area left in a 1v2. Still healthy. Time is of the essence. Are they going to just double face? Is it going to be too many targets for him to deal with? Yes, no it will be. G2 finally seemed to stem the comeback from SMG and take the lead back. G2 aware that they did not have the best gun in the game and chose to stay together. What a great, great adaptation here. They punished that heaven hold. It was such a good hold at the beginning, but then absolutely shutting it down. G2 doing such a great job there that round. Looks clean. 
tournament. And now we're going to see how this last round is going to play out. Either G2 is taking it to third map or <laughs> OT from SMG. And of course, there's a timeout to build a little bit more suspense. If there hadn't been enough over these last, what, 20 minutes that we've had on split. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, so far off these timeouts, both teams have seemed to understand or capitalize one way or another. This one is for everything right now. SMG needs to understand what is going wrong in their setup. Are they going to change things up? How are they going to change things up? And G2 needs to understand that, hey, this Wolfpack mentality that we got going on went really, really good for us. Also worth noting very quickly, G2 have been flying blind for the last couple of rounds because they didn't have timeouts. Finally, a brief moment for Carcass to be able to speak to his team. And again, the final round of regulation. Perhaps we head to Haven. Perhaps we head to overtime. Who knows what's in the cards? Just one ult currently online, but worth noting, SMG have two just around the corner. Shirazi one away from the pit and Airy one point away. Yeah from the showstopper, but the buy is not great. It's a judge and it's a specter. Yeah, a lot of B pressure coming in from G2 here. They're pushing off that Omen. They're aware that Omen has been playing alone all of these rounds. Now we have so much information with the Cypher Cam just looking around. They're trying to set up for a trap setup. They're trying to set up for mid and they just gave up B main like that. They pushed off Omen, but Camille, Doug, she doesn't care. She's still spawning the entry. Mimi's dog clearing things out. At least knowing that the space that they had previously fought, fought for hadn't been taken back. Petra so close. But nothing doing yet. And Aerie now filling in behind the orb, repositioning. Ooh, that was close but I think she's undetected. Oh no, they're, they're, they're pinging it on the minimap. They know she's there. And Aerie's gonna have so much to do and she can't. While that madness is happening, Camille actually getting a pick onto yeah. Mimi in that B main. And now we're down to a 4v4 from both these teams. And again, regrouping in these scenarios is so important. And that's exactly what G2 left. is doing. Regrouping, walking up the flash, knowing that that's where they're gonna be ending and the rotate's coming in. Looking for the trip! Oh, that's huge! But of course, it traded the flash is great, but the tit for tat continues. 13 seconds left. They are gonna get the spike down. Kami and Shirazi with everything to do to force OT. Glance has the ult, but where do you go in a position like this? Maybe heaven, but you don't know if it's safe. You don't know if that's a safe place to go. The paranoia tagging the first. Finally, the swarm coming through. Roxy falls. Glance left in a 1v run. Shirazi, Glance, can she pull it off? Pushing the smoke, the tap, daring the swing! Oh my god, they've done it, Doug! They brought it to OT Shirazi! Oh my goodness! What a map we've had so far. Switching side. My heart is racing right now. This is a crazy, crazy map. Always coming down to these clutches, coming down to these trades. Everyone going one for one for one over and over again. And at the end, Shirazi clutching this out. So important for her team. This OT is going to be so intense. Oh my goodness, that was, that, honestly, I would be like that too, I felt that. What a fight. What a fight we've had in overtime is where things will be settled. SMG on the attacking side again, you hear the crowd fully behind the representatives from the APAC region. See him across mid, nothing found quite yet. No glass cannon op or anything like that as we dance with the first round of OT. Yep, the mid control coming out from both of these teams, trying to bait out all this util from both sides. The Viper wall actually being placed towards B at the beginning of the round as a lurk wall, but it works out perfectly because SMG is opting to end towards the site. They know that Omen is weak. 
Lance trying to jump spot. Ooh, hello. By yourself. That paranoia is going to create some space and an airy satcheling forward. You've got the wall you can tuck behind two. And then the smoke. They've got so much on sight, but G2 mow everything over. Petra with three on the round and an airy who was the first one on the tip of the spear. Now finds the shaft is gone. It's just her dodging the showstopper, getting a kill, but still so much work to do. 30 HP, finding another target. And this would be very, very ridiculous given what we've had so far. And Aerie faking the plant, repositioning so much time to work with. Still has a nade and has an ult. With 20 seconds left, they have to understand she's on site. There's no way she's left and Roxy stops it. G2 hang on to the lead. Oh my goodness. G2. The super fast flood from B Heaven. They were ready to support Glenn on site. What an amazing play. Petra avoiding all that util, avoiding peeking while she's util dumped, and then ending up getting a 3K. Such a well played round from G2. They were ready for such a play. I mean, that was insane. Oh, this is a nice spot. This goes here. Can they do it again on the attack side? SMG back to their old antics of taking all of this space in Garage. And keeping Kamiyu concealed. I wonder if G2 is going to have a really good plan of attack to take this back. And this will be the first time that we see both these teams contesting this v main Garage while SMG is on defense. So need to see how they react. But it doesn't look like they're going to be rushing into anything. First, the mid pressure coming in with the Raze and the Cypher to try to pull that away. But Raze and Omen staying tight in that B-Main Garage. If they want to end here, hey, they're going to have to clear out Garage one way or another. The dog instantly cleared out by an Airy. They still don't know that Kamiyu is there. The paranoia is going to confirm things. They've gotten out from heaven. Oh They've gotten through Garage. They have B. It's all theirs. G2 seemingly putting the finishing touches on a gorgeous map. Spike planted. An absolute treat to watch as SMG's left in tatters. Kahibi and Shirazi, the only two that remain. Oh and of course, there's a the knife. Goodness, Roxy with the knife pulling up behind Shirazi. That is not how you want to go on this last potential round. Kohaibi stuck in a 1v4. It's doable, but this is looking hard. G2 playing such a well-rounded overtime so far. I mean, a well-oiled machine. They do it in style. Complete disrespect. And that's what takes us to Haven. 14-12 in favor of G2, and this series is not done yet. Such a good such a good play. G2 showing why they were number one last year. Because everything that they did towards the end there in that OT showed that they were not scared. They were playing their own game. And they forced SMG to play. 14-12. Haven on the other side of this break. We'll see you guys on the other side.